And so whatever it caused, their cause of being split, Satan trying to destroy creation, he wanted to become God. But we do know that Jesus has the victory. The victory was achieved when Jesus died on the cross and then rose again in three days. The victory is won. It's over. But see, there are still battles. I kind of compare it to this. If your football team is in first place and undefeated and they play a team that is un has not won a single game, that team that has not won a single game wants to win really bad to keep them out of the playoffs. Oh yeah? yeah? All right, well that's Satan. He's defeated and he's lost, but he wants to take as many with him as he can. He wants to destroy as much of creation as he can. And we witness this war every day and we still have to fight. We have to be involved in it. And like I said, most people do not like confrontation. If you're going to follow Christ, you're going to have confrontation. Oh yeah? You've had the experience in your life already. It happens when you go out and you're just loving and caring and compassionate. People get mad. People get upset. People treat you bad because you're that way. They'll tell you stuff like you think you're better than everybody. They'll do things to destroy your faith. And those are battles that will not stop. Those will continue until we are with Jesus. And today we're going to study what Ephesians tells us about the war that we are in. And before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you so much for the victory in Jesus. As we heard them singing just a little bit ago, one of my favorite songs. Victory in Jesus. And it's true. The battle's over. It's been won. But we have these little mini skirmishes every day with the devil. And Lord, I just ask that you will help us to defeat them. Help us to stay strong in our war. And help us to, to be what you called us to be. And to glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are in a war. It goes on every day. And, and there's like a day with just like a break from it. I know a, a lot of my friends will tell me they don't watch the news anymore. They don't even watch the news anymore. I, I, I don't want to see it. it. It just depresses me to see how people are and to see the things that people do. Have you ever met anybody like that? Tell them that. And, and I'm telling you, I, I, I enjoy seeing family, friends, and, and on Facebook. I enjoy seeing things that are going on in some of my friends' churches. I enjoy putting things on about our church. But you want to know something? We're getting close to the election. And so pretty soon, I will be looking at Facebook very little. Because people decide that they want to constantly put things out on Facebook about how they feel. And some of it's hurtful. You ever notice that? Some of it hurts other people. Think People think that they're doing the, the right thing and the correct thing. And they put stuff on there that hurts people. And Ephesians 6, 10 through 13 says this. Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Put on all the armor that God gives you so you can defend yourself against the devil tricks. Devil's tricks. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. So put on all the armor that God gives. Then when that evil day comes, you will be able to defend yourself. And when the battle is over, you will still be standing firm. Our enemy is the devil. The devil will come after us, he will attack us, and he will try to turn us to him. And we can see a lot of the devil in ourselves, right? The number one problem we know that the devil got into with God over was selfishness. And how did he trick Adam and Eve? Selfishness. And how does he trick us? Selfishness. Because we start putting ourselves first. When we start putting ourselves first, that's totally an anti-Christ attitude. Christ tells us, teaches us, that everybody else in the entire world comes first. Boy, that's a tough thing, isn't it? Everything in the entire world comes first. When you start focusing on, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. 
You ever hear that? You ever hear that? I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. I think I've told you the story before. Sammy was interning in that large church down in Burlington, Kentucky. And I went down there to go to church service and I couldn't go with him because he was working with the youth. And I was in there by myself and they stood up and they played this praise and worship music and I couldn't stand it. Could not stand it. It wasn't rock and roll. It wasn't hymns. But it truly was. They said the same five words over and over and over. Then they would switch songs. And have you ever been to one when they switched songs you didn't even know they changed songs? You know? And I looked at all the young people in there and the young people were They're boogieing and raising their hands and just having the best time in the world. And I see these people in suits and dresses. And they were all 70 or older. And they sit there and they stood. And they kind of went like this. And they looked at people. And they didn't do anything. So I went up to them after church. And I said, I, I noticed you people here. And how you felt about the music, and I said, I was really blessed that it looked like you were trying to, to enjoy it. And they said, we hate it. I said, you do? And they said, yeah, but we love it. He said, do you know much about our church? I said, no, my son's interning here. They said, two years ago, before we get this new pastor and this new building, they said, we were having to go door to door to try to get money just to pay the electric bill. And they said, now, we see 20 and 30 baptisms a month. And, and, and we get 4,000 people come now. And we got this new building. And you can just see Jesus working. And it's incredible. And I thought, take a look at the devil and see the Christians go, bam, bam, bam. Because they took him out. Because they quit thinking about me. They, they, they said nothing about me. The only thing they said was they didn't like the music, but they don't go around telling everybody they don't like the music. They stand up and they kind of sway with it and they do their best to enjoy it because they see the people coming. They see the people being baptized. They see the people giving their life to Christ. They see the church growing. And you see, that is what kills the devil. But all oh, Satan has his helpers. He's not alone. We forget that there's demons. And they're all around and they're always whispering stuff in our ear. And we can get stuff in our ear that we become so fired up about it. Satan has abilities. He's not weak. You know, the church got someplace where we started joking and singing songs like if, if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. And right? Everybody sing that in BBS when you were a kid, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. The Bible says that we're not really supposed to put him down. You know, the thing that's hard for us to, to understand is, you know, that God still loves the devil. Did you know that? Because God is love. He loves everything. But he's very saddened by what he does. And God will protect us from the devil. But the devil's very scary. He's not anybody to go out and make fun of or put down or say, if he shows up in here, I'll punch him in the nose. You can say, I'd like to. But more often, he knows how to win when he comes with you. You know? Have you ever been just for a second listening to some news? And you can just listen to some political news for just a second, and you can catch yourself kind of lean into maybe being a little bit racist. Or a little bit, I wish those people would go away. Or a little bit like that. And you know what? Them demons are in your ear. They're in your mind. They're working on you like you can't believe. Because you know what? When you see that political news about the people who disagree with you, how many times do you say, well, I sure love them. I sure need to pray more that we can come to common ground because the most important thing is Jesus. Oh, yeah? Most important thing isn't this election. Most important thing isn't this. The most important thing is Jesus Christ. Because when everything is gone, when everything is burned, everything is finished, everything is ashes, Jesus Christ will be king. But the devil can convince us this stuff's important. And he can change who we are and how we treat people. Because demons, 
They're all over us. They're all around. And they change things in how we treat people. And Satan has incredible abilities. And we should never underestimate him. And if I'm going to fight against Satan, I need equipment. I need equipment. I need Tony Stark to build me some armor. But you know what? There is no Tony Stark. But there is God. Tony Stark is Iron Man. For those of you who don't know. I keep forgetting there are still people in the United States who don't know Marvel Comics. I need God to give me armor. I need God to help me be ready for the fight. Because the fight's not going to go away. The fight's not going to stop. The fight is going to continue, and I have to be ready for the fight. We all have a suit of armor. And I'm going to look at it real quick. Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. Be ready. Let the truth be like a belt around your waist, and let God's justice protect you like armor. Your, feet, your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. Your faith be like a shield and, your, and you will be able to stop the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let God's saving power be like a helmet and for a sword use God's message that comes from the Spirit. So we're going to talk about this armor and the first thing is, is the belt that comes across. If you put on the armor and the belt kept everything together, kept the boots and the boot straps and the armor, everything was in, you had your sheath for your sword, everything was in your belt. You had a thing that you could attach your, your shield to your belt. Everything was the belt. And what does God say the belt is? The belt is truth. Truth. You know why we have so many denominations in the world today? Did you ever ask yourself, why do we have so many denominations? Because somebody doesn't like what the Bible says. And they make a change and they get away from the Bible. We don't, we don't like that the Bible says that. We, we, just, we just don't like it. We're going to get away from that. We're going to stop doing that. And you know, we, and so they get to this church for a while and they say, I don't, we don't like that the Bible says that. Now, do they tell you that we don't like the Bible says that? No. I, I tell you what's funny, I can crack up. I found out about a denomination that was non-instrumental. They had no music in the church. And so I went up to one of their leaders and I said, I couldn't stand to go to your church. I love music. I love singing. And I said, I know that you listen to country western everywhere about truck drivers, moms, murdering people. And I said, you listen to that everywhere, but you won't listen to music in church. No. We can't listen to why can't you listen to music in church? Well, because Satan was the worship leader in heaven. And when God came to him out, I said, show me that in the Bible. We cannot show you. That is something that the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Isn't that convenient? We can start a whole church on that. We can get other churches to spread out. Because you know what? I told him, I said, there's times I get so sick of people fighting about music. I think y'all got a good idea. But you know what? That's not in the Bible. It's not the truth. It is something that a man somewhere has invented and decided to say that the Holy Spirit taught him. And there's a whole lot of that stuff. And that's why you read the Word of God. And that's why you follow Jesus because Jesus is the Word and Jesus is the truth. And Jesus says the truth will set you free and the truth is what to stand on and the devil is a liar. So we know that the truth holds everything together. And, and Satan can't stand against the truth. Our armor, our armor is an armor of justice. And, and the armor was different back then. We think of armor like the nicest stuff. But the armor back then, because they didn't have much money, was chains. It was basically chains that held on you. So you had to hope that when an arrow came, it hit the chain. But God's armor is solid. And it protects us. And it stops the arrows from coming through. And it deflects attack. And we need the armor of justice. Sometimes justice can fall short because who's justice for? 
Justice is for every one of God's people. The right to be free, the right to know Jesus, and the right to be loved. Every color, every country, everywhere. And that is justice. The shoes of the gospel, I, I think that's funny because it, it's, it's and when we read these translations hard, they had these big hip boots, you know? And these hip boots attached to the belt. And they would help race them because everything in a sword fight, or when you're shooting arrows, and sometimes the field would be raining and muddy, and they brace in the boots. You know? And, and so those boots were a huge part of how they could fight. And, and so what does God say our boot is? Our boots are the gospel. The gospel. There are people out there fighting the wars that don't know the gospels of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah? They've never read them. They may go to church. They may go out and, and you know attend a couple times a year, but the thing is, when it comes down to it, they don't know the gospel. So what happens? They're out there playing barefoot. You might want to move a piano barefoot. <laughs> Lift it up, sit down, trying to watch your toes and doing all that. Or would you rather have some steady shoes or boots on? You know? It, it, you want to have that. And you want to have the gospel when you go into a war to keep our feet steady. The shield of faith. The shield of faith means a lot to me because I've loved Captain America since I was about six years old. I love that red, white, blue shield that he holds up. They showed a movie, one of the Marvel movies, his shield broke, and I cried. I cried, I want that shield. I don't want that shield to ever break. You know, when you go into battle, that shield, it, it just gives you protection. But you know you've got that there. You know why? No errors we can get by that, right? If you come at me with a sword, I'm just going to hold that shield up. And it gives me a, a real sense of protection. And you know what that sense of protection is called? That's called faith. Faith. And where's your faith? Do you have that faith that when the devil's arrows come flying at you? You know, I, I got kind of worked up a little bit ago about when all this political stuff comes on and the news is coming on and you can feel yourself getting riled up, can you stop and remember that Jesus is in charge? You're a Christian. It's great to live in America, but you know what? God put you in America, you have no control over it. Very few of us moved here because of reasons. You could have been born in Africa, you could have been born in China, you could have been born in, in Australia. You could have been born in all these different places if you were born in those countries. Who's in charge? Jesus Christ. You're born in America. Who's in charge? Jesus Christ. Can you live like it? Can you live with the confidence that I have this shield and I can stop anything? Because Jesus Christ is in charge. I don't need to worry. I just have to love people. I just have to care for people. I have to treat people the way that Jesus says to treat them. That's my job. That's the way I fight the war. Isn't that a weird way to fight the war? I don't have to say Hulk or smash. I say, I gotta love. I gotta love. Then the helmet of salvation, which is one of the things that I, I know that I'm going to the kingdom of heaven. I know that I'm a child of God. I know that I'm gonna live with him forever. I put that helmet on, it protects me from all the evil thoughts. That it helps me battle those evil thoughts. Because those evil thoughts are going to be really tough. And then last, I have a sword that can take care of things for me. And that's the sword of the Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit. I have the Holy Spirit that when I go out, that Holy Spirit is going to fight my battles for me. That Holy Spirit is going to get rid of Satan. Because I tell you something, I can't get rid of Satan. You know, I, I, I love this story in the book of Acts. These seven guys in the Church of Israel, they're not real faithful, but they're cocky and they're show-offs. They go to this demon-possessed guy, and they say, In the name of Peter and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we tell you to get out. 
they're all bossy. And the demon says, well, we've heard of Peter, and we know who Jesus is, but you're nothing to us. It just beats the tar out of them. I love that story. You see, I, I have none of that arrogance. I know that Jesus is the only one that can take care of that. I know the Holy Spirit is the only one that can take care of that. There's no sense of me running around screaming and being snotty and acting all that. Because you know what? I have the sword of the Spirit. And the first thing I would do is I would say, Lord Jesus, please let your Holy Spirit get the demon out of that man. I, I, I don't know what else is the right words to say. Because I have the sword of the Spirit. I am not in charge. He is. I am not the king. He is. I do not have authority over all principalities. He does. So I have that sword of the Spirit to take care of those battles for me. And if I use that armor, we can't lose. But sometimes we let our armor get rusty or we don't clean it. Or you know what? Maybe it's hot today. I laugh in the hospital. We have these things that we have to put on all our surgery patients. And they're called SCDs. And I get in trouble all the time because when I'm in a hurry, I'll say that patient in 20 doesn't have their STDs on. And all the nurses laugh and make fun of me. So today I said, right, SCDs. And we have to make sure the patient that you have those on 22 hours a day. Because blood clots can't form in your life. Do you have those for little TV babies? <laughs> and, and, and so, anyway, we have a thing that's called a KIP board or something. All the executives of the hospital come and look and they say, mm, it says here that uh, some of your patients didn't have their SCDs on for 20 hours yesterday, 22 hours. Can you tell me why? And I said, well, they don't like them on. We have to convince them that they're on. I said, well, I started a new plan the other day that I told them that 95% of our patients that don't wear them lose their limbs. And they said, you can't lie to them. But they don't want to wear them because they're hot and they're sweaty and they, and, and they just get old and they want them off after a couple days. But the doctors say they have to have them on, and that's exactly why we don't want our armor. I don't want to read my Bible with that. I want to take a couple weeks off. You know, this stuff, Jesus may not like this, but it's fun, and I'm only going to do it for a few days. There's no problem with that. And we lose our armor. We decide we don't want it. But we always have to remember we have the greatest weapon of all. Ephesians 6, 18 through 23. Never stop praying. Especially for others. Always pray by the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and keep praying for God's people. Pray that I will be given the message to speak and that I may fearlessly explain the mystery about the good news. I was sent to do this work, and that's the reason I'm in jail. So pray that I will be brave and I will speak as I should. I want you to know how I am getting along and what I am doing. That's why I'm sending Tychicus, Tychicus to you. He is a dear friend with a very hard name to pronounce, as well as a faithful servant of the Lord. He will tell you how I am doing and he will cheer you up. I pray that God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will give peace, love, and faith to every follower. May God be kind to everyone who keeps on loving our Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer. Never stop Pray. Pray in the Spirit. Do you ask the Holy Spirit if you're praying for the right things? Do you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in your prayer? Pray with your eyes open. That doesn't mean when you have your head bowed. Pray for the things that you're seeing around you. Ask God about the stuff that you see going on. Because prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Can you win your battle? I gotta tell you, most people say, well, I have trouble seeing the enemy. Who is it that I'm fighting? I want you all to get out your smartphones if you have your smartphone. Everybody get your smartphone out for me. 
because I found a site that has the enemy on it. So once you get out your cell phone, press your little button that opens it. I want you to go to camera. Okay? When you go to camera, there's a little camera at the bottom. And you press that. Oh my, I'm looking at me. Are you looking at yourself? Because that's your first enemy. That's where the battle starts. You know, when we hear about enemies and battles, we immediately start thinking of all the different people. Oh yeah? Oh, this person. Oh yeah. I'm not like, me and the Lord are going to kick it with this person. And you want to know something? First person you and the Lord need to kick it with is you. You. Because most of us are selfish. Most of us want what we want. We don't really have to decide for what God wants. And you know, you find out when you get out there and you're really working hard for the things that God wants, you're going to get really beat up. And you're going to be surprised by people that beat you up. They're going to be people that you think they ought to know better. They ought to be more fired up about the Lord. But they've been consumed by the enemy to thinking about themselves. To thinking about me. And what it is that I want. And the number one way that you can know you're achieving victory in Jesus is when those eyes come off of yourself. And when the Lord starts quit letting you quit looking at yourself to know who to find and let you know what He wants you to do in the community. And let you know what He wants you to do with others. Can you win your battle? Yes, you can if you have Jesus on your side. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you're wearing your armor, and if you let him take care of this and then move on. If you want that in your life today, we offer an invitation for you to come as the ladies say, please stand.
When's the last time you invited somebody to church? Because I'm going to tell you, I sometimes I get down about the Facebook things, and because uh, I see that nobody shares them, and I do it to be goofy and serious and. and 